Hi, I'm Barb and I'm Alex and we're Enchantarium. In today's video, we'll be making Saber from Fate's Day Night as a part of an anime doll swap hosted by Retro Dolls US. Saber is one of the main characters in Fate series and she's the legendary heroine known as King Arthur. She is a highly skilled warrior and she was summoned to fight in the Holy Grail War as the servant of the main hero. First, let's start with a package we received from Alicia from Bodyful. We got a lot of goodies, tiny ribbons, a pearl kind of chain, we already used it on Bon Clay's coat, white trim which we have also already used on Irene's skirt, some sparkly glitter, rainstones, buttons, some hair and a card. Last but not least, a Zara doll from One Piece. He's amazing, has a lot of detail and beautifully hand-sewn clothes. We love him! Thank you Alicia for these amazing gifts. Shout out to Shannon from Retro Dolls US who organized this swap as well. For this custom we are using a Frankenstein doll. First I'm going to cut her hair as close to the head as possible and remove her face with acetone, cotton pads and q-tips. I'm removing the rest of the hair from the inside using pliers. I'm sending off her stitches with sandpaper. Saber has a light beige skin color, so she needs a recoloring treatment with pastels and a lot of MSC. It took 3 layers of MSC to look decent. The same process applies to the head. When the color of the skin is ready, I'm painting her scalp a light tan color to match her blonde hair. To reroute this doll, I'm using Ambition Nylon from Retro Dolls UK. The process is pretty standard at this point, poking the hair plug by plug. As usual, I'm securing the hair inside the head with heat-resistant glue so it can handle boiling water later. A little squishy squishy and let's try to figure out her clothing. One word, layers. There's a pattern to this whole outfit in the description down below. I'm starting with a white dress underneath. I'm tracing the teeth and cut them out. I can't really hem this part without going insane and it looking bad, so I'm applying fray check. It held up pretty nicely. After drying, the lines don't show as much as you see here. Next, I'm assembling a petticoat. I gathered a strip of mesh fabric and I'm attaching it to the rest of the petticoat. I'm stitching it on top of the solid fabric piece so it lays a little bit better. Now. I'm joining the two pieces we made so far, both facing the wrong side towards me, by stitching them at the sides and along the top curve, close to the edge. I marked what appears to be about 4cm from the top, and I'm going to close the skirt from the bottom to the mark with the skirt folded right sides together. I'm turning this right sides out and adding some velcro in the back. Now. I'm gathering the top and bottom edges of the sleeve puffs. The top edge length will have to match the armhole seam in the bodice and the bottom edge will match the rest of the sleeve. I'm joining both of the sleeve pieces right sides together. For the bodice, I'm starting with some darts, sewn, also right sides together. Assume everything goes right sides together unless stated otherwise. I'm attaching the sleeves we prepared earlier. I'm going to sew the new bodice together along the sleeves and the sides. Carefully turning it right sides together. I'm adding a simple collar and flipping the seam allowance towards the bottom and I added some snaps in the back.
Now we need to cut out the front. I traced the pattern on the top while on the doll to see how it will work out. I'm snipping at the inside making sure to leave these flaps so I can actually hem it. I'm doing that with some fabric glue. I added this white piece underneath, kind of cheating my way of the shirt Saber wears under this corset. I'm going to add some lacing with a golden thread. Now for the blue skirt panels. The back panel has two female snaps and I'm going to add the male snaps to the underskirt. I marked the positions while the skirt was on the doll. The front panel is attached with glue to a belt. I took some velcro, both sides of it together, and glued it to one of the ends of the belt. Since the velcro is closed, I can put glue on it and wrap the belt around for a snug fit. Finally, I'm attaching the front panel with glue. This was the most difficult project I've sewn so far, and I'm very happy with how it turned out. Let's make her face. I start the face up with blushing her cheeks, nose and lips and drawing a rough sketch of the eyes. I decided to make her a little bit more realistic than in anime, but still keeping the cartoonish vibe. When the sketch is ready, I'm drawing the eye with a black pencil. I'm adding a little bit more shadow over the eye and starting to draw the eyebrows. I usually make brows higher on the forehead, but Saber often has an angry or focused expression, so this time the brows have to be closer to the eyes. I'm detailing the eyes with watercolor pencils and acrylic paints. Anime characters usually don't have any lip color, so I'm painting Saber's lips with really neutral peach color with some brown and white details. I'm giving her black and white lashes and some more blushing and pearlex powder shine. I didn't record it, but I made her brows more brown and detailed. Moving on to her hairstyle. I'm cutting her bangs with scissors in more realistic way than in anime. Just straight bangs. The bun on the back of her head was really difficult to make and there were many versions and I stopped recording. What you see on the screen is maybe the fourth attempt and I was just lucky that it worked. To secure the hair I used pins bent like this with pliers. I believe this kind of hairstyle would be easier to make with yarn hair. The last step is pinning the braid around the bun. I'm making her armor out of craft foam and gluing some shapes together. For her shoes, I use these monster high shoes. First person to comment who they belong to gets 100 legendarian points. I modified them with a knife, epoxy sculpt and some sandpaper and later added foam to them as well. To make her sword, I whipped up a quick model in Fusion 360 and printed it out on my Anet 3D printer.
Let's paint all the armor pieces. My first victims are shoes and I'm painting them silver. The same goes for the decorations from Craft Foam, but they have some more detail. Then I move on to painting the gloves, or at least the upper parts of the gloves. At first I wanted them to look like old and used metal, but then I remembered she is a king, so she deserves a well-maintained armor. I'm painting some details, referencing Saber's design of screen. The best part to paint was her chest armor. It has so many tiny paintings and details, and you know that I like to make tiny ornaments, so it was fun! This is how all the parts turned out. Now, let's paint the printed sword. I covered it with white acrylic and now I'm painting it using a reference of Excalibur from the show in silver, gold and blue colors. The golden paint that I'm using has high transparency, so I'm painting those elements yellow first and then gold on the top. The outfit also needs some painted details and it's more or less a golden edge everywhere. For the same reason as with the sword, the golden paint is mixed with a little bit of yellow and white for more coverage. Since the parts have been painted now, I am assembling the last details on her shoes with some hot glue. I'm also adding the armor pieces in their place. I'm gluing them to the belt, so the armor is completely removable. And that's it! This is how she turned out! It was a very complicated project for us to make, because it has so many layers and details, but overall, it was a lot of fun! Saber is now in her new home with our friend and fellow doll artist Leoni from Zarnia Arts. Hi Leo! Have you seen the Fate series? Who's your favorite character? Tell us in the comments down below! Make sure to follow us on Instagram for some sneak peeks and subscribe for future videos! Have an enchanted day and we'll see you next time! Bye!